hey guys in this one we want to be showing uh, the value in the nodes on the nodes so we're actually displaying some information now right off the top of your head you might be thinking this is easy right we can just uh, make an empty selection and then append number of text elements equal to the number of nodes with enter and append and then inside of tick you probably want to change the x and y position and that is indeed one of the ways that is not the bad way but there is indeed, uh, there is another way that is more of the commonly adopted way, and in my opinion, the cleaner way. But first of all, let's do the first one I just said. It's easy. You just do SVG dot append a G, so every single text go inside of this G container, and then let's do select all inside of this G dot select all text, which will be an empty selection first time around, and then let's bind graph data dot nodes to it, and then enter append so the number of enter nodes again should return four enter nodes because we have four uh a node length a node array of length four and there is an empty selection so append text but we have only appended a text element we actually have to uh and a really important attribute of the text element is is um i think it's text instead of actually text text and then let's put in d and let's return d dot name okay so nothing is happening because we didn't do anything here so d dot attribute x um and then same thing here all right so as we can see it does work however personally i'm not the most i'm not you know this approach definitely works but i'm personally not a fan of this approach because um it just doesn't seem like it's it's sharing data correctly so as you can see here we have three different g's right but if we look inside of the circle in a text, we can see that it's sharing a lot of the same data. And in fact, it's all, all of the X and Y positions are the same. So maybe another approach is that we can actually combine these two G's into the same one. And then we only have to move the outer G uh, to be able to move the elements inside. So let's do that. First of all, let's remove everything that we just did. Going to remove the text tag. Um, so, and also we're going to be removing this. Now, what I like to do personally, which I think is a really, really helpful HTML overall web development tip, is to, you know, like write out your data. What 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 my HTML will look like? It's going to look like G, and then. small g in which in which each of these have a text and then a circle and there's g and then you know a, li a limited amount of them depending on the length of our data so it's depending on the length of our data and that means we're probably selecting into this G and then doing data dot append or enter dot append. Yeah, but first of all, our SVG didn't come along with the G, so let's append a G to our SVG first. Uh, so, and I'm gonna name this whole thing like a bar G container. Or, you know what, let's make it really intuitive text and. A circle text and node <laughs> equals to and nodes or text and nodes equals to svg dot pen g and then inside of that g so we're now selecting this g right this thing right here corresponds to this and inside of it we're going to select all of the g's then we're going to do then we're going to bind the data to the empty selection I mean, at first it's going to be empty. 
dot nodes, and then we're gonna do dot enter, dot append. We're gonna append a G. That's it. So hopefully now when I open up the browser, refresh it. Welcome to my YouTube chip page. Uh, please subscribe. Thank you. Then I go to console, actually elements. Uh, that's not right. This is not the, this is mine. Yeah. Hopefully I see like four empty G's under a G. So this one, yep, yeah, I see four empty G's, which is perfect. And now I can do my work, right? Now we're basically, we're, 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 yeah, we already got stuff done. We already got these G's. So we just got to, uh, for each of these G's, we just got to append a uh, text in a circle. And to do that, it's really easy. Text and nodes dot append. A circle. And then text and nodes dot append nodes. I mean, text. And for this one, we are going to do a requirement for circle is that you need the length. I mean, you need the radius and then you need maybe a fill. Let's do red. For the text, you definitely need, definitely need the text itself. So function D return D dot name. And just in case we gotta use it later, we gotta reuse these. Let's name these two variable. Bar text goes to this. Okay. Now I see a little red dot right there. I don't know why, because I didn't set. Oh, I think if you don't specify the X and Y, it defaults to zero, zero. Not sure if I'm right, but let's, you know, let's put the G container in the right position and let me think I just in case I, I can see potentially one confusion here and um, you know it's, when we when we call dot append on an array it does iterate through each of the elements in the array and that just again d3.js doing the work implicitly for you because we're typing declaratively we don't need to do for loops and all that Yeah. So inside of here, let's change the G containers position. And because the children elements inherits the parents uh, elements position, we don't need to change the circle and text position. And that's what I talked about earlier. That's the sharing the data, right? That's a powerful thing. G container dot attribute. And what I'm typing right now is actually not going to work, but I want to show you guys it anyways gonna do it the shorthand way okay refresh this going to SVG second G every G uh, oh I didn't name this G container <laughs> text and nodes okay save refresh shouldn't have saved right there second G you can see the X and the Ys are updating and of course they're continu continu continuously updating because of the force simulation. Now, now we can see that the G did not change though, even though the X and Y are saying that. And that's simply because G does not accept X and Y, it accepts transform, the attribute transform. If you never messed with transform before, it's the same thing as X and Y. Besides X and Y is usually, you know, less, it's, it's more intuitive, right? But G unfortunately does not do that. So transform will look like something like this. Uh, we actually let's do X and Y, and we actually got to return something like that in a string. That's why I wrote out the wrote out the string so I can copy it correctly. So it's gonna be attribute transform, and then return. Well, I gotta pass in the D so that we can utilize the data from the force simulation that was ran through the force simulation and then return translate plus a bracket plus d dot x plus a comma right plus d dot y plus who's calling me okay so it seems like two things that are going wrong uh first of all 
the texts are not being rendered. Second of all, the links are not. Okay, this is not. This shouldn't be in it. This is not. Shouldn't be in it because there is no nodes anymore. Okay, links work. Okay, why is there text? Oh, well, that just worked. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I believe, yeah, I think I disabled the drag somewhere. So let me move this up there and I'm going to apply it to text and notes. So I'm going to apply it to the G container instead of circles. Of course, you're going to do the, the circles way. Call drag. It seems like D.FX is not working. Oh. When did I erase it? Okay, that works. Well, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, perfect. So, let me, you know what? Uh, because next one, I'm not going to be talking about Forest Direct Graphs anymore. We've covered a lot. And if you remember the demo that I showed you guys on the first day, it's just, uh, you know what, an extension of this. So you already know all of the tools you need to build an amazing application with Force Direct Graphs. For more resources, resources again, check out bl.ocks.orgs, um, made by Michael Bostock himself. And that's it. That's it for this video. From starting from the next one, I think I'll be talking about bubble maps. So I'll see you guys there for a new adventure.